For a long time now, the AI in my game have been pretty terrible. In my past videos, I've talked a lot about the Navgrid system, which is a system that provides optimal positions for the enemies to move to, and is something that I've focused a lot of my time on. But I haven't spent much time on making the AI actually work well with the game. And I thought it was about time for the enemies to stop moonwalking around, and start having them act like functioning members of society. But before diving straight into the enemies, I needed to fix a bug in the Navgrid system. Occasionally, enemies would just change positions for what seemed like no reason, and would just ping pong around points. After a quick debug session, I found that the raycast used to check whether an enemy is blocking a taken points line of sight to the player, was hitting the enemy standing at that point, causing the AI to move positions since it thought another enemy was in the way of its firing path. This was something I implemented to prevent the enemies from standing right behind one another, that way they would stop shooting each other, but I needed to find a way to solve this issue without using raycast. The solution I came up with was to have a line go out from the player and through the point that an enemy was standing on, and then have all other available points calculate the distance to the closest point on that line. Any open position close enough to that line will be removed from the available points list, making it so that no other enemies will move to a position in front of or behind a stationary enemy, which prevents the enemies from standing in each other's way to begin with. However, they still sometimes cross over firing paths and get domed. With that bug out of the way, the first thing I worked on, which is arguably not important, was creating better animations for the enemies. Not good animations, just better than whatever the fuck this is. For a long time now, the enemies have been using animations from a free pack on the asset store, which looks decent until the animations are applied to the enemies. And I decided that if I was going to improve the behavior of the enemies, then I might as well make it look like they're actually walking. So I opened up Blender and got to work. I ended up creating four walking animations, one for going forwards, backwards, left and right. I also made a run animation, but let's just pretend that doesn't exist. By blending between the four walking animations in Unity, the enemy's steps are able to match with the direction they are moving in. Of course this was after redoing the animations 50 times because nothing ever works on the first try, but since the normal enemies use the same rig as the heavy enemies, the animations also work on them. I also fixed up the enemy's hitboxes and classified them as either head, body, or legs so that depending on what body part the player or enemy shoots, the damage applied scales appropriately. In addition to scaling damage when an enemy gets shot, their fire rate also gets reduced for a short period of time. For visual feedback, I wrote a quick method that would make the enemies flinch when taking damage, which was accomplished by just rotating one of the spine bones. However, since the enemies shoot projectile based bullets, one issue with this method was that if the enemy fired while flinching, the bullet coming out of the gun wouldn't match the orientation of the barrel. The ideal scenario would be for the body to flinch, but have the gun remain pointed at the player, and the only way I knew how to do this was with inverse kinematics. The only problem is that I have no idea how to program inverse kinematics, but luckily I'm a Unity developer so I don't have to. Unity has a package called Animation Rigging, which provides components to easily add inverse kinematics to characters. Emphasis on easy. So after spending more time than I care to admit, the enemy's weapon will point at the player and the hands, body, and head will follow in a somewhat natural looking way. Not to mention the enemies now actually aim at the player instead of just rotating to face the player. Now to get the enemies to flinch, all I had to do was to blend between the weapon target and flinch target on the body rig, which doesn't affect the rotation of the weapon. So once the enemies no longer looked like shit, it was time to make them not be shit. One issue I noticed was that they accelerate too fast, which made it hard to shoot them when they started moving, so I slowed them down which made them quite a bit better. Another issue I had was with the heavy enemy shield. In the last video I introduced the heavy enemy, which starts off with a LMG, but switches to a shield and wrist gun once the player steals it. The whole point of the shield was to make the enemy more difficult to kill, as a trade off for making the heavy less dangerous since it would no longer have a high rate of fire weapon. I didn't like how that particular shield worked, since the only way to kill the heavy would be to shoot his shins. 
So I changed it to an energy shield that covers the whole front of the heavy, which breaks after taking some damage. The heavy enemies would also shoot constantly with the LMG equipped, which was frustrating. So now the LMG overheats if fired too often, and takes a couple of seconds to cool down before it can be shot again. Which gives the player a break from the constant barrage of bullets. Another issue was with the enemy's aim. The enemies would always aim directly at the player, and since the bullets have travel time, if the player was moving, the bullets would always miss, which meant that the player could never die if they strafed in a circle. So it was time to bust out all reliable, where we use a little bit of math to predict where the player is going to be in a couple frames based on its current velocity. This of course would make the enemies too accurate, so I applied an accuracy scaler that approaches 1 if the player continues in the same direction, and resets to 0 when the player changes direction. And to finally make the game feel more like a game, I added in a basic health system where after not taking damage for a couple of seconds, the player's health starts to regenerate. So with all those changes made, I started test playing some of the levels. Overall, the enemies are a lot better than what they were, except for the normal enemies when they try to punch the player. That's still fucked up. But I did notice one issue where thrown weapons get stuck on the enemy's colliders. So to fix this, I added a new layer that won't collide with the enemies, and whenever a thrown weapon hits an enemy, it changes to that new layer. This fixes the gun getting stuck on the enemies, but the new problem is that now the gun just goes straight through the enemies. To solve this, all I did was get the normal vector of the weapon's last collision and multiply it by some constant to make it appear that it bounced off the enemy. And that's pretty much it for this video. But I did want to say thank you for 50,000 subscribers. It's a sub count that I never thought I would hit, and I really appreciate your guys' support. And as always, thank you for watching my video. Hey!